So differentials is how to approximate using differentials. Check this out. Basically, it's a formula for delta y. This little triangle is delta. It's called delta. Delta. We're going to learn in calculus 3 the upside down triangle. That's going to be del. It will be very cute. Uh, in the case, different derivatives. Delta is small change. So in general, delta is small change. Increment. Do you know the word increment? I just learned like two years ago. Increment. It's a small change, small step away. So sometimes we call it small step size. Instead of five, we're going to have 5.1, 5.03, and so on. That's delta. So approximating change in y by using derivative and little change in x. That means change, let me make it thicker, change in y. Do you know what, why did I say that? Because it's delta y. So I'm describing the formula in the box. Change in, it's actually definition. Change in y can be approximated. A, P, P. Approximated by, from the this 2.8 topic, we learn that we can approximate stuff using derivatives. And that's basically, if you don't understand anything about this topic, I just need you to know how to do those examples uh, for the exam, right? From practical point of view, I need you to pass exams. From studying and learning point of view, if you don't understand what is happening, remember this one phrase. Apparently, we can approximate things with derivatives because derivative is a change. So anything, a function, can be approximated with its derivative in the local neighborhood. So tangent line is so important, and that's why we keep pushing you to learn how to find tangent slope and tangent line because apparently that's a big part of linear approximation or in general approximation by the corresponding co r r corresponding corresponding change change in x so change in y and change in x, that's delta x. They can be approximated by change in x, but what kind of change? Multiply by a derivative, right? So by a factor of f prime. But there's also interesting word here, magnified. I will ask you to explain what it means. Magnified or diminished. Those are GRE words. Who took GRE exam? Did anyone take GRE exam? Oh, yeah, yes, did you, you see, yeah. international students, we must take them. Those are your GRE words. You guys going to go to grad school, you will all take GRE exam, and you will feel the pain just like I did and all of us did. <laughs> Unless they cancel them at some point, because they are actually thinking about it. By a factor, by a factor of F prime. GRE exam has the one main purpose, to teach you all the words you will never use in English. Abacus. Why do I know the word abacus? Just to mention it as an example of a bad word to know. Abacus. It's like nice. Now I know the word abacus. How good, right? Why would you know like a 17th century calculator? 17th century calculator. There was like a detail of the wheel of that thing that horse drags in the wild, wild, wild west. There's an, it apparently has a name, and I had to learn it for the exam. The carriage. But there's like a detail behind the wheel of the carriage. And I had to learn it, and I don't remember what was it. Wait, for think, the exam. I think MIT is kind of cancelled here, right? in terms of like not they, accepting. MIT is not cancelling uh, Yale and Columbia. Actually. Yeah, they're all debating right now not to include it. So they don't cancel it, they don't, don't require cancel, it. Not to it yeah, so who can tell me what is magnified first? Do you know what magnified is, the translation? Zoom. Something bigger. Zoom, make something bigger, right? Zoom in, strengthen, how would yeah? So, yeah, make something bigger. And diminished? Macro. Macro. Ma what? Smaller. smaller, right? Bigger, smaller. So it makes sense. Bigger, smaller. The derivative is multiplied. Smaller. The derivative in the formula is multiplied by a small change in x. Uh, small change in x. is multiplied by derivative at the point, and that means it's either going to make it bigger or smaller. That's the times 4 is bigger, times 0 0.4 is smaller. So that's how we can approximate. Did you see my approximate waves thingies? 
approximate change in y. There is a, such a thing in mathematics and science called uh, sensitivity analysis. You have an amazing uh, model that models cancer behavior, or you're building a ship, and this model uh, explains how the ship is operate in the salty water. The sensitivity analysis will tell you which points of the model are sensitive and which one are not. What if you change a little bit the input of X and say X is the what material is made of? Can I use alumina or should I use uh, screws of three millimeters longer or shorter to save money or maybe to make it lighter? When people send something to space, they want to minimize the weight of every detail. Every screw matters and so on. So do you change screws to be a little bit smaller. If this result jumps by a lot, then uh, the model is sensitive to that parameter. And that's how they approximate. There are more formulas how to do it. But they change a little bit x using derivatives. And then, boom, it's magnified everything way too much. Then they know this parameter is important. But sometimes it doesn't. They decide to change the size of the screw. Nothing really changed. OK, now they can do that and save money or may put more screws. So it's very applicable idea, applied idea. So let's see. Mm. In general, I mean, we can just write down, do an, make an example, but let me write down. Also, you will see delta f, which is delta y, equals. So original f, x plus delta x. You will see it in your homework. Minus original. So change in output is new output minus original output. And new output was, was changed by a little bit. The new output has a little bit of change in the input. Does it make sense what I just said? So small change, it's the same color. Small change, like so, small change. So original, original, I like to call it new and old, original. Yeah. Original subtracted from the new one, and the new one has small change in it. That is your new delta F. So they will ask you to find these things. Don't write down this example, I actually changed it. But what I wanted you to do is, did not fit, let me move it. What I wanted you to do is to write down that that's called, dif those things called differentials. Do you know, uh, so they're coming from dy over dx. And there's a joke, there's lots of memes about mathematicians saying dy over dx is not a fraction. It's a notation, derivative of y with respect to x. It's one notation. Until we go to this chapter. When we go to this chapter, we suddenly defined that dy has a name and dx has a name. And dy is, I mean, they're both differentials. Differentials. Let me just write down. Differentials. Like so. They're both differentials. So the formula I just gave you comes differentials, comes from this very uh, fun thing that dy over dx equals f prime. And then you know what they did? They multiplied by dx. dy equals f prime dx. And because it's not necessarily true, which is kind of not very important to explain so much um, at the point or everywhere. How does it work? What we do here is we substitute it with changes instead. So each side means a change, the change in um, how fast the rise is changing versus how fast the run is changing, input, output versus input. So what they did is they, write, they wrote down delta. Delta y can be approximated as f prime at a delta x, like so. Very interesting idea. Yeah, it, it, you will be, I need to be very honest about it. I don't like putting 2.8 to the exam at all. It will be definitely an exam two. Uh, the coordinator will give me problems, but I usually minimize the number of problems for this chapter. It is a very nice chapter from applied point of view when you go to upper level classes. Physics will have that, engineering will have that. 
But from the mathematical point of view, it's okay. It's nice to know it, but I don't want you to stuck with all those approximations of your homework. So finish the homework and we're gonna move on to exponentials and different stuff. And that's why I'm gonna work on this one homework number six for you. So this problem is already solved in the video. That's why I don't wanna repeat it. I will do y equals tangent because I saw in the office hours people stuck with tangent a little bit. Find the differential dy when x is three and dx is 0 0.4. And we're not gonna do the second one because it's literally the same thing, y repeat. So what do they want from us? They want you to know the formula first and the formula solution. The formula is whatever I just said. We need to find dy and dy will be approximated. Well, differential dy will be approximated by the derivative of the function f and f is tangent for x plus eight at three, because they gave me three, times little change in x. So it's gonna be dx, which is given 0 0.4, like so. dy equals, or it can be approximate as, oh, actually dy equals exactly, delta y is the one that approximated. And again, I will remind you, it came from the idea dy dx equals f prime. So you don't have to memorize it as a new formula. You just remember the notation dy where dx equals f prime. And then they broke it into pieces and using it as approximation. How to approximate change in y if I know small approximation of change in x? This means I'm changing x by 0 0.4. Whatever it was, now it will be plus minus 0 0.4. Do you understand that the idea? It's like a step size. Oh, it's like 5% off. The temperature is 78% plus minus 5%. Well, oh, that's too much for Fahrenheit. Plus minus 2%. So in this case, it's plus minus 0 0.4. It's a small change. That's the idea. So what happens with how fast this function is changing? That's output. If I'm changing the input. Well, we can use derivative to find that. Step one, let's put it in the box. This is something you just need to know. Yeah, three is mm, the x they gave me. So step one, let's find derivative in general. And that's what your quiz today has, like 55 derivatives. <laughs> Tangent. Did you say 55 derivatives? Uh, and we're gonna differentiate that. That is chain rule. You have it today in your quiz. So try to work in groups today. I think it will be more fun to work in groups. Derivative of tangent first and then times derivative of four x plus eight. Do you remember that? Chain rule means chain reaction. What is derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Copy 4x plus 8 times derivative of 4x plus 8, which times 4. Does it make sense? This is something you have to start being good at. And I don't have to say that you need to be perfect at this this week, but master the exam will be just asking lots of stuff like this. So slowly I need you to be good at this. You're not supposed to go to calculus 2 class if you cannot take those derivatives. That's just, that's the bar. You can forget differentials, and you can forget linear approximation, and you can even forget related rate problems. But you need to know how to take derivatives. It's the alphabet of calculus. You cannot go and become engineer without that alphabet, the basic stuff. Times dx, uh, no, for now we just found f prime. Step two, step two is the answer. Nothing really different here dy equals f prime times 0 0.4, because it was given. So it's going to be 4 secant squared 4x plus 8 times 0 0.4. But what happened with f? What's happening here? We need to plug in, I did not plug, three, right? 
So equals, let me write down three. Three was given. Four, secant square. Four times three, whatever is in color, is given. 0 0.4 was given. Equals. And now, you guys, for your homework, you for some reason take calculator and start calculating this. No, don't do that. Just type in the answer. I feel like you're putting too much effort into calculating decimals. Why not to type in 4 secant squared and then 12 plus 8, it is 20 times 0 0.4. Just type this in and you could simplify 0 0.4 part, right? Type this in. Why I, I keep seeing you guys doing that in calculator? Eh, it's fine. The exact answer is always better than not exact. But if you want to know, it's approximately 9.6. Questions? This is your homework problem number six. Questions, people? Questions, comments, ideas, differentials, approximations. Yes? So you said there was a debate whether dy by dx is fraction and this notation. Is that true or that's just a joke? I would have exact one. Huh? You mean exact answer or fraction? Oh, no, no. I'm asking. Earlier you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Is it just a joke or is it like fraction? No, no. It's true. We always say dy dx is a notation. You're not supposed to break it down. And then we go, go into this topic and we're breaking it down for approximation purposes. So, but it is a fraction, right? Because essentially you're just calculating the slope. Right? Yes, exactly. It's the same type. That's why there's a joke. It is and it's not. At the same time, it's notation. And at the same time, it is change in y or change in x. It's both. Yeah. But students sometimes tend to simplify it. And they write down, you know, dy dx times dy dx. And then somehow it becomes squared and stuff. You're not supposed to do that. Yes? Uh, in the definition, we wrote it as f of a, like f prime a. And like, is a equals to 3 because we substituted x equals to 3 in place of a? A was 3, yeah. But in the question it was given x equals to 3. Oh, 2. Oh, I changed it. I changed it. This one, this one says 3. So, okay. yes, x equals to 3, but like we are replacing x equals to 3 in the place of a. Yeah. So, is a and 3 good? Yeah, a is 3. So, a is x. Given x, yeah. A is 3. A is a given x. At A. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I need for this topic. 